Hello Ghanaians, good evening. I've come into your homes tonight on a matter of major importance for the nation and for me personally. It concerns the referendum of 17th December, whose purpose is to seek popular support for the repeal of Article 55.3 of the Constitution, a provision which currently bars political parties from involvement in district elections and local governance. On my arrival here in Jubilee House on 9th January 2017, nearly three years ago, I came with the firm conviction emanating from the campaign and national discussions that there was a national consensus for two important amendments to our governance system which would enhance its effectiveness and accountability. One related to the possible reorganization of our regional governance structure, and the other to the potential involvement of political parties in local governance. I thought, and still think, that such reforms should be based on a broad national consensus. It was in furtherance of this and other matters that on Tuesday 18th April 2017, a little over four months into my mandate, I held a meeting with my three predecessors, the first, second and fourth presidents of the Fourth Republic, their excellencies Jerry John Rawlins, John Ajekum Kufo and John Dramani Mahama at Jubilee House to seek their views and counsel on these issues. I came away from that meeting with the view that there was consensus amongst us that the time had come for political parties to participate openly in district assembly elections and local governance. Indeed, amongst the leadership of parliament and amongst members of parliament on both sides and amongst virtually all stakeholders who had been consulted either by me or by the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development. The clear indications were that there was a broad national consensus for the repeal of Article 53. The attainment of a broad consensus, for me, on a matter as important as the amendment of an entrenched provision of the Constitution, is critical. I do not believe that such an amendment should be driven as a party matter. There has to be a clear national consensus and agreement amongst the populace that a particular entrenched provision no longer serves the interests of the people and thus has to be removed. In this case, it had been long apparent that political parties were in fact actively involved in district assembly elections, despite their apparently non-partisan nature. The time had come to strip the process of its hypocrisy and accept and work with the reality of party involvement. Just as there was a national consensus on the demand for the reorganization of our regional structure, which enabled the creation of six new regions, despite the stiff constitutional requirements to proceed satisfactorily, there was every reason for me to believe that there was a consensus on this matter too. It is on this basis that I proceeded and subsequently instructed the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development to initiate the parliamentary process for the repeal of Article 55.3 of the Constitution. Fellow Ghanaians, it is the same electorate who vote to elect a president and members of parliament on a party political basis who are going to vote to elect their own MMDCEs on a party political basis. Far from it being divisive, elections have in fact been a unifying factor in the politics of the Fourth Republic. That is the reason why for the last 26 years, under the constitution of the Fourth Republic, we have experienced the longest uninterrupted period of stable constitutional governance in our history, 
banishing the specter of instability that disfigured the early years of our nation's existence. And the benefits are still showing. It would also mean the freedom of association, which is one of the most fundamental freedoms in any democracy, would be given full expression in Ghanaian democracy. Regrettably, two weeks ago, the main opposition party, the National Democratic Congress, made what I can only describe as a U-turn. It stated that it was no longer prepared to go along with the national consensus. They indicated further they will actively campaign for a no vote. Inasmuch as I still believe that there's enough support in the country for a yes vote to be successful on 17th December, I do not believe that this is the proper atmosphere in which an issue of such nature, i.e. the repeal of an entrenched provision of the Constitution, should be addressed in our country. Even after their U-turn, I undertook consultations across a broad range of opinion as to the way forward. The general result of these consultations was that the process of repeal should be put on hold for the time being to enable a durable national consensus to be forged on this matter. In these circumstances, I'm convinced that it will not serve the public interest to go ahead with the holding of the referendum on 17th December, even though I believe a strong campaign for a yes vote would have succeeded. This is not the kind of atmosphere in which the repeal of an entrenched provision of the Constitution should take place. Even though I'm unrepentant in my belief that party politics is good for our country, for it enhances accountability, I also think that on matters of such constitutional significance, there should be a broad national consensus behind the repeal of an entrenched provision of the Constitution. So, fellow Ghanaians, it is with deep regret that I've given instructions to the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, who has spearheaded this process on behalf of government with commendable vigor and dynamism to abort the process and see to the withdrawal of the bills for the amendment of the Constitution, both in respect of Article 2431 and Article 55.3. Nonetheless, I assure you, the good people of Ghana, that my government and I will continue to work for a broad national consensus on this issue. And should such a consensus be attained, for the repeal of Article 55.3 of the Constitution and an agreement reached for political parties to participate in and sponsor candidates for election to district assemblies at any point during my tenure of office as President of the Republic, the matter will be brought again back to the front burner of our public discourse for the necessary action. May God bless us all in our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention and do have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click on the little bell for more updates.